Welcome to the Real Estate Raw Show, hosted by Joe Mendoza. Hi guys, Joe Mendoza here in sunny San Diego. Welcome to my show. Thanks so much for watching, subscribing, and sharing the great words of wisdom on the show. Today, I have my friend coming from Canada. Super excited to be talking to him. He has a lot going on. He's in a place where I love very, very much on the west side of Canada. Steve Arneson, welcome to the show. How are you? Joe, I couldn't be better. We were just chatting offline about how uh, we're going to actually do a room swap one day. I'll come down and hang out in San Diego. You can come out and hang out in Victoria. And uh, I'm just craving some sunshine, man. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Count me in. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So for my audience, I usually start it this way all the time, who don't know you, tell us a little backstory before real estate, your transition in, et cetera. Yeah, sweet. So my transition into real estate, I kind of come from a real estate family in a lot of ways. Uh, so I've got uncles and aunts who are project managers, developers, realtors, uh, brokers, etc. And so I was kind of born into it. Um, certainly, uh, at one point, I was like, no, no, real estate is bad, because uh, there's like some family drama that was going on that I associated with real estate. Uh, so I fought it for a long time. Uh, and in that world when I was kind of fighting the real estate sector, uh, I was really passionate about business, really passionate about travel. So I ended up finding a job with uh, an avi um, aviation company and I did their international biz dev. So I used to work with a lot of different foreign militaries and I used to work, uh, my, my main role was to set up what's called MROs, basically a, a, a auto mechanic shop for aircraft. And they would uh, sign up as a distributor for our product. And I would teach them about the product and help them sell it to, to their clients, et cetera. So it was perfect for me, you know, imagine a 23 year old, you know, jet setter getting to travel to 29 different countries, wow. build a business from 75,000 a year to over 7 million a year. And, um, and just, you know, live the, the, not a nomad life, but like live the, the jet setter life for, so I did that for seven years. And then I had a bit of a out of body experience one day where I kind of turned around to my desk and I saw my, my superior Scott and I had this like moment of like, Oh wow. And Scott was sitting there over his desk. Like you could tell that he was just stressed to the nines. And I was like, this is my life. Like in 10 years or 15 years, this is my life. And he was, Scott was like, he was 50 some odd years old, uh, you know, working 80 hours a week, barely saw his family traveling all the time, you know, unhealthy, and I was like, oh man, like something needs to change in my future or else that's the life that I'm going to be living. And so that was kind of like one of the first pokes to be like, all right, Steve, something's got to change. And then uh, kind of fast forward into the real estate side of things. Uh, my mom helped me get into my first live-in flip and I bought a condo in the nicest part of Victoria uh, back in 2012. So the very bottom of the dip uh, here in Canada and uh, lived in there, just did a bunch of sweat equity to the place. Uh, made a ridiculous profit on it because the time that I was in there, our market really appreciated. Uh, and in that meantime, uh, a buddy of mine invited me out to this education program about real estate investing and joint venture partnerships and using OPM, other people's money, uh, to, to get forward in the real estate space. And so we went and checked out this, you know, kind of that typical, like, go to a two hour thing, they sell you to the weekend, they sell you to their like mega mastermind kind of thing. Right. And so we ended up going all the way through. And then we even paid for even more mentorship because <laughs> we were wow. just, once we had a, a taste of it, we were hooked. <laughs> and uh, uh, over the last, I guess, five years since we created the reinvestors, uh, we've just been on a, a mission to disrupt the industry a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it's down the same down south of the border, but up here, like the old boys of real estate kind of have this you know, guard up and it's really hard to like, get information from them. We come from the opposite, like more abundance mindset side of things. And we just share everything we do. So we started a meetup. Uh, we did some mentoring and stuff. And over the last five years, you know, we've done 20 plus deals. Uh, the lowest ROI we've given to somebody is 19%. Uh, we've been able to do events that have, you know, thousands of people come by and just uh, our mission statement is actually that we want to financially educate a million people and inspire them to invest in real estate so they can live a more fulfilled life. And so went from, you know, jet setter to that aha moment of something's got to change. Real estate was just like that easy fallback and uh, already had a lot of connections in it. And then I just got ignited. I found some passion in it and I quit my nine to five three years ago in January and um, haven't looked back since. 
That's an awesome, awesome story. So let's dive a little bit deeper, pick it apart a little bit. Yeah. Let's talk about your family. So your, your family, they were in real estate. Uh, you said, I think, invest, um, investors, realtor, broker. You saw all these different arenas. Why did you start to laser focus on one? Or are you doing a couple different things in real estate? Yeah, we do a couple different things in our business. Uh, so we've done some flips. We do a lot of joint venture partnerships uh, on income properties. Uh, and then just as our market has changed, so have we needed to as well. So there's uh, the saying that's, you know, evolve or die or adapt or die. And so we've always tried to be on the cutting edge of things. And, and with that, we started off doing um, half duplexes with suites. And then we turned into full duplexes with suites, like so four units total. Uh, and then we did some small multifamily. We did some large multifamily. Uh, now we've gotten into more development. And so we've got a 12 lot subdivision. We did a sixplex. Uh, and now we're working on a 37 unit condo build. And a lot of it has come from partnerships. And so uh, we partner with the developer. We raise the capital. And then we kind of act as the middleman between it all and uh, get an, ex, uh, an, an incredible experience working with the developer because they actually act as a mentor as well. So we've had to, we've had to change a little bit over the years as our markets appreciated, just the numbers didn't make any sense for the income properties anymore. So we said, all right, how can we stay in this space, continue to learn and grow and development was the answer. And so rewinding back to seeing my family, uh, I have an uncle who's a small time developer takes, you know, um, one lot splits it into three and does, you know, multi-million dollar homes. Uh, I've got an uncle who is a large scale project manager, works a lot with um, the government of BC and other provinces to put um, like ambulance buildings in and et cetera. Uh, realtors, you know, uh, mortgage brokers, some financial planners and stuff. And where I fit in, I've always liked the creativity side of things. So that's why development really calls me and why I kind of like the fix and flip Burr model uh, by renovate, rent, refinance, repeat uh, really calls me because you get to actually create something. And I love seeing, you know, beat up old place and then the evolution into, uh, you know, something more beautiful. And so it's kind of like that caterpillar butterfly analogy. We like to buy the caterpillars, we form the cocoon. And then at the end of the day, we release the beautiful butterfly. And um, so in, in that space, that's where a lot of our passion is for, for the development side of things and uh, why we've kind of chose to double down on development as well as like the Burr model. So let's talk about that, the, the development side. So you take this raw piece of dirt or info lot or something like that, something that's already entitled, and then you do the ground up and then maybe potentially you take it full cycle and now we're going to trade it for something bigger or sell it, use the equity and trade for something bigger. Um, is that is that part of also your model where you're going to sell and then get another piece of property or parlay it into multiple properties? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's that's half of the strategy. So it depends on which development we're talking, because we can also build a rental. And then, you know, hopefully the, the model with the rental is the same idea as a burr where uh, all your costs are then refied and the building itself operates with a positive cash flow. So you have no money in, but you have just a building that pays you every single month, including contingency, et cetera. The other side of things is more so that's the long-term play, right? That's the long-term play of you're basically just putting an ATM in the ground that's going to pay you for the rest of your life. The other side of things is how do I get paid today or, or a lot earlier? And so that's the condo to sell. And so uh, working in that strategy, it's two, three, four year time frame. And what happens then is instead of getting, I'll say a thousand dollars a month from your, your rental, you get a million dollars after two years. And then you have a, a much larger sum to go and play with for future or bigger opportunities. Got it. Now, somebody who was also on the show is from Canada, another part. And he mentioned you guys don't have 1031 exchange over there. Is that correct? That is, that is sadly correct. Okay. We, uh, I want to ask you about that because over here we do have it, but I've been hearing they might even eliminate it. What are your thoughts? I mean, is it, is it to an advantage or disadvantage when you're doing business up there and trading for bigger properties? 
I mean, taking that away, I would say it would be a big disadvantage. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love the idea of being able to basically parlay that equity into the next project. Okay. And uh, in you can do that with your primary residence here in a sort of twisted kind of sense, but to take a larger like investment property and, uh, and go through that road, I think has um, a lot of upside for people to be able to just me. I'm, I'm, I'm goal oriented. I'm challenge oriented. So I'm always looking for like the next thing and like, what's going to help me grow uh, into the, the next piece. I'm not like, I'm not one to settle almost not yet. Anyways, I can settle in my future down the road. Um, and so with that option for me, I'd, I'd love to just con- to continue to conquer that next step, con- continue to grow and have so many different things that I've learned and experienced and uh, have just a, a wealth of, of knowledge in my head that then, you know, when I'm, I'm 33 now, so when I'm 53, let's say, you know, I can kind of pick and choose where to really specifically put my time and really just dive deep into, into one particular thing. But yeah, uh, I can't believe that they're talking about taking that away. Yeah, that, that it is interesting conversation nowadays here in America. Um, let's talk about your mission. You, you have this massive mission. Where, where's that coming from? Like what, what's instigating you or um, uh, where are you finding that encouragement or enthusiasm to empower so many people? Oh, it's a... Uh... It's definitely a big, you know, big mission and it's a big thing to unpack as well. There's a lot of things that are involved in it. Uh, Randy, who is my business partner and longtime friend, him and I probably are number one love language for both of us is acts of service. And so uh, we've been fortunate enough to be a part of uh, other masterminds that do a lot of giving back. We've been fortunate enough to volunteer at orphanages fortunate enough to um, work with local chapters of kids sport, um, which helps kids get involved with organized sport that can't financially afford it here in Victoria. And, and we love just seeing the impact that our time or our money can create for people who don't have, you know, don't have um, those, you know, essentials of life. And so a big part of it comes from uh, our, our motto, which is go big to give big. So we have our mission statement, which I mentioned earlier that we want to financially educate a million people and inspire them to invest in real estate so they can live a more fulfilled life. Yes, it's mouthful. Uh, but we also have go big to give big and go big to give big is all about inspiring others to go bigger with their goals and dreams so they can give bigger with their profits. And so they really go hand in hand. And for us, we are what you would call a for purpose business. So yes, we go make money for ourselves so we can keep a roof over our heads and live a great lifestyle. But with every project we do, we have a line item for giving back. So whether it's our meetup, our mastermind, a flip, uh, an income property, a development, every single thing that we do, we involve some sort of give back. And uh, for us, like we've gone down to orphanages down in Mexico and played with kids who have, uh, you know, experienced human trafficking and to go through something like that at a super young age, but then to hang out with a couple of Canadian gringos and just like, smile and laugh and sing and dance and play soccer and and like they look completely carefree almost it's like how uh, like it just blows my mind to go through such a trauma uh but then to be able to be so real and authentic and and kind and and high-spirited and uh like experiencing that really just drives us to be able to create more of that impact for more of those kids and to help other people like us go through that experience to be like, yes, I need to be more involved in, in doing this. How do I get more involved? Well, I'm going to build myself a business that in the line item, in the bottom line, like I'm giving back. So like dollar for dollar or percentage wise or per project, doesn't matter. Just start now. And that's a, a big part of our mission. And then rewinding to the early days when we were trying to learn about real estate investing, we found it really challenging to, um, you know, to get trusted information, I guess. And, you know, five years ago when we started, you know, um, Zoom wasn't a big thing. YouTube was still like, meh. Um, And it wasn't nearly as many podcasts at the time. And so education wasn't just on tap. Like you really had to hunt it out and then cross-reference it because up here in Canada, like it's really easy to get US content on real estate investing, but it's not very easy to get 
a lot of like quality information about Canadian real estate investing. And yes, maybe like 70% of it is the same, but that 30% can make or break you here in Canada. And so uh, we wanted to be the leaders of just an innovative space uh, of just like open transparency. And so with our investors, we show them absolutely everything with our, our meetup or our mastermind. If you ask me a question, I'm going to give you the real honest truth, whether it's about finances, what our project, if I don't know something uh, or anything, it's just like, we're here, we're here to support people, pull people up and a rising tide rises all ships. And we just want to be, uh, you know, a catalyst to help that tide rise. Very nice. Very nice. I like that, Steve. That's, that's incredible. We need more people like you. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned a crazy return earlier about like 19%. Mm, it was mm. kind of your low end. And somebody listening to the audience, maybe a naysayer, like that's crazy. How could you do that? Is it something like you're finding off market deals or what's kind of like that magic ingredient that's contributing to such very, very um, attractive numbers? Yeah, there's a few different things that go into it. Uh, about 40% of our portfolios come from off market. Um, but, you know, a significant portion has just been listed product. And a lot of it, the biggest thing is two things I'll say. One, we don't settle. So we have a saying in our business that is we'll pass on nine good deals to find the one great deal. And so we don't, we don't do a lot of volume of deals. That's not our model. We're more quality over quantity. And um, the other part of it is that we get really creative with deals. There was a fiveplex that we bought a few years ago that we were in negotiations with the seller for probably six months and it went on and off the market about three times and had a lot of people through there, but they just couldn't quite figure out how to make it work. It was a little bit older of a building. It was going to cost a few hundred thousand dollars to get, you know, read and read. Um, there was some like bad tenants in there that nobody wanted to deal with. And uh, so we took it from approach of like, all right, like at this number, we were very firm on our number uh, at this number, it makes sense. And so we just did a lot of follow-up. We knew that we were going to be putting in some late nights, doing a lot of sweat equity on our own side and not paying contractors uh, to do the work for us. Um, and we took it from an approach of if we can uh, get really creative with how we get uh, this under, under contract, as well as how we do our renovations and keep to a fairly strict budget, then we know that we're going to make a, a profitable deal. And that one, did, continues to do uh, quite well. Uh, another one that is more recent, just in the B, where are we? We're March. Uh, so a few months ago, we bought a single family home that had a studio Airbnb in it. We saw it uh, completely different than most of the people who saw it. It was on market for, I don't know how long, um, but it was a bit, of, it was a 1940s house, had a pool in the backyard. I mean, it was a great, great place to live, but it was high priced at the time. Um, because there was some potential development opportunity. So it was on uh, two thirds of an acre and we can actually split off one of the thirds to subdivide into uh, another property. But what we saw was there was an unfinished basement. And what we ended up doing was we did basically a full gut, took most things down to the studs. Uh, we removed a chimney that went through three floors and we ended up creating a two bedroom suite down below, a legal two bedroom suite down below, a legal three bedroom, two bath upstairs. And then we just added a wall to make the Airbnb a one bedroom. So now we've got three suites giving us income. We raised the, the value of the property so significantly that we refied all but $60,000 of our cash after putting $700,000 into it. And then we still have the opportunity to either subdivide or build a garden suite. If we build a garden suite, that's going to add another $2,000 of income to the property and we'll easily hit the 1% rule at that point, which is very challenging to do here on the island. Uh, and so it just takes a lot of creative looking. It takes being, you know, uh, first to act on, on some properties and it takes being a really damn good project coordinator and treating your trades like gold. Because when you find good trades people, uh, they can go get a job tomorrow with anybody else, probably paying them more than we do, but we spoil them. Great communication, you know, Friday beers or coffee or Timbits or whatever. And um, 
Uh, yeah, it's just, and then the last thing I'll say is just, you know, we've been in a really appreciated market in the last, the last five years, like Victoria's just gone off the radar with, you know, uh, a lot of other markets across, you know, across the States and Canada too. So that hasn't hurt. Is, is there anything that makes you nervous about this market and what are you doing to maybe overcome that or, you know, mitigate some risk? Totally. So, uh, historically we go in like seven to 10 year cycles right? We're, I think, 13 years in or, or whatever it is. And uh, so like, per that math, we're overdue for some sort of correction, depression, recession, whatever label you want to slap on it. So we've been fortunate enough to be mentored by very skilled people and be a part of high level masterminds ourselves. So back in the early 2019, one of our mentors, Cole Hatter, who runs Thrive, uh, he was like, hey, you know, we're 12 years into this thing. Like, you should probably be thinking, like, if something happened tomorrow, would you be prepared for it? And we were like, no, we're not prepared for it at all. <laughs> so his advice was just get liquid. Take some of your portfolio, find the runs, and sell them. So that's what we did. We had, um, what do we, I think we sold within 2019 and early 2020. We probably sold almost half of our portfolio and just packed the bank and um you know it helps us in a sense be prepared if there is some sort of downturn one we know that we'll be able to pay the bills pay our staff pay ourselves and be able to live through whatever that cycle is two it gives us you know the option to go unconditional on something and know that there's financing in our bank um ready to ready to close and it helps you know with some negotiating power, as you would know. Um, and am I worried about it? In, in some markets, absolutely freaking lutely. In Victoria, uh, a lot less so. Historically, uh, the biggest drop that we've ever seen is 11%. So buffer that up and say 15%. If you think that uh, worst case scenario is a 15% drop overnight in Victoria and all you do your, all of your numbers and due diligence off of that number and the project still makes sense. What's the risk, right? I don't think it's going to disappear um, because we have so many uh, economic factors here in Victoria that drive our market. So a perfect example is think of like, uh, and I have no idea what they would be up, you know, in the San Diego area, but if there was a, a town fairly close that was just fishing or just mining or uh, just a mill town, right? And there was just one industry or two industries that really drive that city. And if that mill gets shut down or if that fishery gets shut down and you lose half of you know, your industry, your economy is gonna collapse. With Victoria, we're a capital of British Columbia. So we have government, lots of government jobs here. We have great education. We have a ton of demand for real estate. So there's a ton of construction going on. We have one of the, uh, if not, well, we have the best climate in Canada. So we have a ton of population moving here. We have a ton of job growth. We have agricultural, we have farming, we have the list goes on. So we've got 20 different industries supporting our economy. So you could kick out 10 of them and we'd still be a thriving economy. And so when you start looking at the economic factors of it all, you're like, all right, well, let's double down on our area because the, the risk, the floor, the drop is so high that the drop's not going to drop too far. And if it does, we can weather that storm because we know in three years after that, you know, we'll have a big bounce back like what we've seen over the last few years. Very nice. Wow. That just sums it up right there, Steve. <laughs> I, I love data and, and economics, so I can go off on that all day. <laughs> I could tell. I could tell. That's great. Well, Steve, it was very nice having you on the show. Anything else you wanted to add? Things you're promoting? Best way to get a hold of you? Uh, the best way to get a hold of us uh, is our link tree. So just go to the Reinvestors link tree, and um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make sure that you get a hold of that. Uh, you can find us on Facebook as well. We've got a great uh, Reinvestors community on Facebook. We don't really have anything to promote. Uh, the biggest thing that's really helped me succeed is just finding coaches and mentors that have or have accomplished what I want. And so I'm going through that cycle now where I've outgrown my current coach and I'm currently shopping for the next coach. And even just shopping for a coach, you learn stuff and you grow from that experience. And so if you want to be a real estate investor, if you want to be a developer, if you want to do 
whatever your career path is, find uh, an excellent mentor in that space and be coachable and committed and uh, just go gangbusters and go big to get big. I love it. Well, thank you again, Steve. We wish you a lot of best, best luck in the world. And uh, thanks for being on the show. Uh, Thanks a lot, Joe. Take care. You too. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I hope you learned as much as I did or more. So guys, look at the comment thread. If you've seen something or heard something, want to learn more about something, please put it on the comment link below. If you're not a subscriber yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and smash that bell to hear the latest and greatest on the show. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. I'm putting this channel together to hopefully add incredible value to you. And if you want to learn more about investing, you're new to investing, I highly recommend this book, Flex with a Plex. Also, this book, if you're having some challenges, as you can see, everybody on the show had some kind of adversity, including yours truly. So I shared a lot of that on Make It A Comeback, giving you some incredible tips to make a comeback. So get either one, Flex with a Plex, or Make It A Comeback. If you want to get more tips, go ahead and go to JoeMendoza.com. Again, subscribe, share, like, make a comment below. I really, really appreciate you. Want to add incredible value and wish you all the best in your success in real estate and in life. Take care. Our company is not responsible for the success or failure of your business decisions relating to any information presented by our company or our company programs, products, and or services.